Hello everyone. Deep Checks is a new open source library for performing the test related with machine learning pipeline. Using Deep Checks open source library, you can perform test at three different places. First, you could perform the test with your data set before it's being pre-processed and getting ready for machine learning. At the second stage where your data is ready for machine learning and you are splitting your data into training and test, at that time you, you can do the data integrity test. And finally, after you have completed the machine learning and your model is ready, at that time you can perform the third level of tests related with your model combined with your training and test data set. So depending on your need, you can perform all three or either one or combination of any of these tests. Because the deep checks library is still very new and it's evolving. So it is possible that in coming weeks and months, there could be more changes added into the library. So this hands-on lab is just a starter for you to get yourself ready, acquainted with DeepCheck's library, and get to know the various aspects of it so you could use it in your machine learning pipeline. So my name is Avkash, and I have prepared this video tutorial for you, so please enjoy. So if your question is, when should you use the DeepCheck's tool? The answer is that deep check tool can be used in three different stages when you are working on your machine learning pipeline. First, your data validation. It means that you are collecting data from various sources and before pre-processing, you want to validate your data. After you complete the pre-processing, all of your work is done and finally, you are splitting your data for the train and test. So the second level of validation you could do with the train and test validation. So it is just before training. And finally, when your training is completed and your model is ready, then you could add the third stage of integration of deep checks into the model analysis and model validation. So these three places, you could take the advantage of deep checks library. Now we can get ourselves started. I do have Jupyter Notebook service running on my machine. So first, we are going to start the first Jupyter Notebook. And my version of Python is 3.812 and I do have deep checks library installed as you can see here if you do not have you need to install the deep checks library and the deep check library the latest version is 0.5.0 and once the deep check library is installed basically the deep check library is a collection of test suites so if you want to use the deep check library you are going to import the suites from the library. So from deep checks, and we are using the suites full suite. So once you get the full suite, you can get the suites equal to full suite. And if we take the look into the suite, here you can see that this suite is a collection of 35 different tests and these tests are collection of various tests in the three different stages. So as you could see here, this is a trained test score. This is the model related. So AUC score, biases, test. And if you look into the bottom here, these are the tests related with the data validation. So mixed null, mixed data types, string mismatch, label ambiguity, train test sample mix, and all of these tests, they are coming into the suite and they are explained here. So the data distribution, the data integrity test, 
And if you see here, the majority of these tests which are available in the suite, they are explained here. So please take your time and study them. So that's a collection of suites. Let's save this notebook, install check. So now for our tutorial, we are going to take the advantage of this test and work on a one problem. So I will be using this uh, UCI heart disease data set. And I do have this Jupyter notebook available on my GitHub. So please feel free to use it. So we are going to use one of the example available, available in this Jupyter notebook related with heart disease data set. And we are also going to use the Titanic data set also because we want to perform all three different tests. And we are going to cover our test cases between data validation, training test validation, and the model analysis validation. Then we are going to create a new Jupyter notebook. And this Jupyter notebook, we are going to perform the data validation test. Validation. We are just taking this importing the suite. We also need to import the pandas. So import as pd. Next, we need to import a data set for this problem. We are going to use this publicly available Titanic data set. So this is the URL. So source equals to, this is our data set. So df equals to pandas dot read csv and source. So now we have our data frame available. So whenever we want to run this test suite, we have to create this object. So suit suite equals full suite. It means please run all the tests. We have already checked the suite collection of tests available in this suite. So in this scenario, when we are going to start a test, we just need to say suite.run and you are passing your data frame. There you go. As soon as you have passed your data frame, as you could see that these are the tests available, checks without condition and checks without output. So as you could see here, these are the checks which ran, however, there is no output here. It means these either these tests are not applicable or they really do not have anything to contribute in the result. So checks without output, the checks without condition. It means some of the checks ran, but there were no condition. So this is the column info you can look into and column info is here. So these are the column detail. There is no condition whether if columns are there or not. So this is just an information about that your given data frame has these columns and it only shows the 10 columns. If you want more, you have to go and enable this end top columns parameter. Finally, checks with conditions. It means these data validation related test ran on our given data set and here are the results. And check means everything looks okay here. Mixed data type, data duplicates, a string length out of bound, spatial characters. So these are the test and everything looks like okay. So if we would want to play some kind of devil's advocate role and we try to just create some ambiguity in our data, we could actually do it here. So what we do, we just create a new sample. So we say sample 20 equals to df dot sample and we give 20 record here and we create a new data frame. And this data frame is going to have the pandas dot concatenate and we are going to take the df and the sample 20. So now we have ndf which is 8 81 plus 20 new row and we could reset its index. Now we have NDF. So this is our new data set. 
Now, if we would want to run the same test, sweet dot run on NDF. And as you could see here, that data duplication is found. So if you click on it, the explanation related with the tests are described here. And very quickly, you could see that 2.2% rows were duplicated and some of the samples are available. So that's a one very quick way to run the test for the data validation and see the results. Now we can take a look into the data integrity. So these are the data integrity tests. So if you just want to run the data integrity test, you do not want to run the full test, then how you could do? You could actually run just simply the data integrity test. So from deep checks, suites, import single data set integrity. And then you can say that you want to run the integrity test single data set integrity. And now you have the integrity suite and you can run the same NDF. And that is only the integration test. And if you look into the check without output, these are the tests only which do not have any result to contribute. So that is different than what we have seen earlier here because this was the full suite text test. It's a full suite. In the second scenario, we are only running the single data set integrity suite because we are performing the data validation. This is the data distribution test that is related with training and test. And this is the drift shown on the whole data set. So we have seen a very quick way how you could run the full test for the data validation as well as the only the data integrity test. So any of these result, wherever you are, if you would want to save them, you can save them, save to HTML. I think it's called save or export to HTML. So after you have completed a test and if you would want to export the test, the only thing what you need is that you need to take the result and you need to store that result in an object. So I could say the suite result equals test. And if I want to see the suite result, I could see locally here in this Jupyter Notebook cell. Or if I want to save it, I could say save as HTML and I, I can give a file name and I could say it's a simple data integrity test for Titanic and it will be stored as a HTML record. And if you look into LS, we have this data integrity titanic record. So that's the test. We can take this and look into the Chrome browser and that's what it really look like. So whole test is available for us. If we want to run the same test on a different data set, we can select a different data set. Let's use this hard disease data set. We could use source equals different one new data set and now if you would want to run this and let's take a look and that is for and we have we need to change this first so after we have read the data set we could run the full test and here you could see that this data set has some duplicate result and here are some of those results available and most of the test did not run because they had nothing to contribute so this was another way you could run test on any other data set so we have took a very quick check and looked into how you could run test for the data validation. Next, we are going to perform the text test related with training and test data. So let's create a new Jupyter Notebook and we are just going to use this code. Let's use okay, and df equals 
create csv and we just call source this is our df now we are going to perform the full test means we are going to run the train and test validation here so let's split our source data set so from sk learn model selection import train test split and we can say df train and df test train test split given is our input and the test size we could say just use 0.25 percent so df train so now df train and df test and if you look into df so that's like 75 25 percent split we have so test suite we already have so we need to create the suite equals to full suite and whenever we say suite dot run so if we would want to perform the train and test validation we need to pass the data set related with train and test so these are all our train and test so in this data set our target is target column and our rest of the columns are features in our training data so what we need is that we need to define the data sets for train and test so from deep checks import data set and then let's so ds is for data set deep check and we call it train equals data set and it will be df train label column will be the label column so we can actually write our label column so label column is target that's our label column so label column will be the label column and if we have any categorical columns in our data set then we need to provide that also in our data set we do not have any other co categorical column these are all numerical column and that's how we could validate is we could say df dot describe it shows mostly these are the numerical column and if we try to check the d type and everything is numerical column for that reason we do not need to pass the categorical column otherwise we need to pass something called category features and then we need to pass those columns so there is no categorical columns here actually here so categorical column will be here so, so that is our ds train actually it's called label so this sex fps and x these columns are taken because they converted them to the categorical by itself now let's define the ds test and again is going to be same so data set test and if we look into these ds train they are actually the type of deep checks data set now when we are running the suite we need to pass the training and the test data set so training data set is the ds train and the test data set is ds test so the training data set these features are automatically converted so we need to pass the categorical so categorical features and test is started so i will just explain you what has happened when we converted the training data set to ds train the deep checks library understood these three columns sex fbs and ex ang so sex so is a 0 1 true and false 0 1 true and false and then the third one is fbs so fbs is also is having 0 and 1 so these three columns were converted into the categorical 
and when this ds test was created based on a df test the conversion does not happen by itself so i just manually added sex fbs and ex ang column as a categorical feature and the ds test was created and after that when we run this test we pass the train data set and the test data set so because of this test now the deep check system automatically understood that this test is actually test which is going to perform the data integrity test along with data distribution test so the train and test related te test will automatically ran here so now we could take a look here is the checks column info for the train and column info for the test checks without output and if you look into some of these tests they are related with models machine learning model boosting regression unused features so there are still lots of tests which did not have anything to contribute and here are some of those checks and if we try to click on any of these checks we are going to get the details about it so let's try to export this result and result and take the sweet result and save to html and i just call it full test dot html So this is the now we can look it much better way so here we have data duplicate we have already seen here is the train test drift and then the train test label drift whole data set drift but these are not the errors we could look into the results now so for drifting it's take account the training data set and the test data set and look into a feature so at this one graph it shows the feature name rest ecg and the input is taken from both train and the test data set and here is the distribution of those value and the drift score is 0 0.05 that is between the limit here similar to that there is another column and another column so all those each individual features available in the training and the test data set the drift has been checked and if there is a drift which is higher than accepted values then the error is going to be reported and that's why we do not see any error here now we also looked into the train and test label drift and that is where it is to so calculate the label drift between the training and the test data set and if you would want to know more about it you can always click this link and that opens the documentation page where the details about the train and test label drift are explained and as you could see here so if you are interested please go to the documentation and learn more about it so that's what we were looking into the whole data set drift drift value is not greater than point to five and everything looks okay, good here okay but it's a whole data set drift data set size comparison so the comparison between these test and trains is like a 25 percent we already created so which is based on given criteria single feature contribution train test so it's a predictive power score and thus taking the feature importance and the predictive power so good thing about deep checks are is that results are available and they are also explained in some cap capacity so if somebody new they can get to learn more about it and they also have ability to learn by looking into the documentation so we have run this test and in this example we were using the heart disease data set and we ran this test what if if we take this Let's rename it relation. If we change this to Titanic 
data set. So now we have Titanic data set. Here is our data frame and here you could see that we do have few of them. Uh, fields are categorical can be used. So for example, we have survived, we have P class and the embarked, these three class could be used as categorical. So we are going to do the distribution. So we have taken the train and test and the label column in this example will be the survived. That's our survived here and now label column. Let's see what happened. As soon as we have created this data set based on our training data set, so automatically it took the P class, sex and embarked here. And based on that, we have created the DS test. And now we can run this full test here. And we can save this and we call it Titanic full test. And let's open the Titanic full test. So here is Titanic data set. And as you could see here, some of the errors are reported in this data set. We can look into the single length out of bound. So ratio of outlier not greater than 0%. So there is some of this. So K seven. So additional out of showing only the top 10. So some of these values are. So what happened is that in this particular column K bin, most of the values represent that the person where that person belonged to. But in some cases, there are lots of K bins IDs are reported and the deep check system somehow believes that some of these values are outliers. So that's the reason it's reported as an outlier. Rest, everything looks good. Uh, train and test label drift, as you could see here, PPS score. We can look into the data sites comparison that is within the requirement and train and test size ratio is not smaller than 0.01. So in one example, if we try to split this and we just call it 0.1, now we have 90 record. How about if we 0 0.01? Now there is only 9 record. What if we call 0 0.05? Now there is only 5 record. So the test data set has only 5 records here and rest is okay. And we are going to run this test now same categorical features in this scenario, the categorical classes are added even more. So let's take this one, P arc and this train test. Let's run the test. And now we just try to take a look at here. And as you could see here, because of our Test data set is really very small. I only created 0 0.005, so there is only five record. As you could see here, there are lots of errors are generated. So if we try to save this full test, we call it bad. Let's open the bad one. And here, as you could see, that some of these test. So print test size ratio is bad change in ratio of dominant value in data is no longer than 25%. So now we could see that some of these results are visible which with some errors which we have just introduced by making certain known issues. So P class has a lot of NAN. I think that's where. So training and test validation helps us to understand that how you could use the deep checks to perform the test depending on what your input data set is. So now we have covered this data validation and train and test validation. In the next step, what we are going to do is that we are going to write a custom test. And that is related with data validation. So at this point, we could close this test, this test, this, we are okay.
custom data check. Let's take the same quote and source. We could just use these two. So we have the source df equals to pandas CSV. Source that's our data frame. Now, what we are going to do is that we are going to create a custom check, and the custom check is actually documented here. So, we can just use this custom check. So, here they have custom check related with custom suite and then custom check. So, here is the very simple custom check. Let's try to use that how it works. So here is a data set size comparison. So it's related with train and test. It means we need to perform the train and test split for our input data set. So let's take this. I think we have already done. So we just need to get this one. So now we have created the DS train and DS test. So this is the test we have created data size check comparison and it compared between the training and test data set and it tries to tell that what is the training data set and what is the test data set here. So now we could say result equals we already defined this data side comparison. So data size comparison dot I believe is run and we need to pass the DS train and the DS test and result. And as you could see here, the result is data set size comparison, which is we have created here. So data side, data set size comparison. And it takes input DS train and DS test. If you will not provide the DS test, for example, you see missing test data set. So we need to provide the test data, data set here. And because it's used the train test base check. So train test base check, it means you have to provide the train or test data set. However, if you are running a, a data set related test and if your input is data set, then if in that scenario, you are going to provide the data set or data frame, you do not, you do not need to provide the split of train and test. So for that reason, our results are defined here. And then we can look into the result dot value. And it shows that the train size is this and the test size is that. So value is return value is written here. Now we can look into this little more. So that's where the result value is. And if you would want to add more capabilities in our method, we could actually add to it. So rather than expanding here, we can take this and we do not need this right now. And what we are trying to do is that based on training and test, it creates a graph display. So it just create our graph display, which is taking the size value and showing here. So let's run this thing and then we could see the results here. So results and as you, you could see here data size comparison. So for the training data set, that's the size and that gives you that, okay, this is a very simple extension built into which checks the training and test data set. However, there is no validation built into means, oh, it's our bad or good. It's just information that the, the total number of records in your given input uh, training and the test data sets are like these. The next step will be to add the conditions. So here you could see that basic type check. Now the conditions can be added in this one. So check condition. So here is the condition. Conditions can be added. So here you could see that add condition. Depending on your need, you would have to add the condition. Could be anything. So let's add a condition. So here from the deep checks is a condition result. The lowest is a 0.4%, highest is a 0.6%, 
so the split between the training and test must be in between here and condition results condition results so this is a condition and this is the custom check is a data set size comparison so data set site comparison is this method and we are trying to add this condition to it so data site comparison we are adding the condition and this is the condition we have just defined condition name so condition name is this and that is a custom condition so this condition is a custom condition here is the condition name and we just call for example here custom x it means this is our we ran so data set size comparison now have has a condition it means if you are going to run the test now the condition will be added to it let's look into the result now as you could see here that we have added the condition so after we have created the custom check but and that is part of our data set size comparison and here is the documentation is not connected because we are writing the custom check so what we need is that we need to make this test and try to integrate with the suite so from suites so we have taken it and then this is our custom sorry we need to import suite so deep checks suite so we are defining a new suite so suite is and this is going to use this custom check so here is the custom check so new custom suite is added here so new custom suite has a data set size comparison and condition is that that the train test ratio must be between 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 in the next step we are going to condition result and condition category and we are going to bind the custom condition which we have created here but make it more condition category whether it's fail or it's a warning or it's true so lowest highest and train in so we have created the custom condition and added the condition result so now we have our custom suite so we can say custom suite dot run and we need to pass the ds train and ds test so as you could see here when we have our distribution is 0.25 percent the failure happened based on our custom test and the train test ratio is 33 percent between here to here so it's like 222 it's like a 33 percent now if we need to make it four to six percent we need to just add little more to 25 percent so if it is a 25 percent we could make it 30 percent so just making a 30 percent the 0.33 percent will be uh, more than 0.4 so let's convert this let's see what is ds train and the classes are p class sex embark these three class so, so our ds test is also having these classes and then we could run this test here and we should be able to pass it and as you could see here the result is between 0.4 and 0.6 so we have passed the test so this is the way you could create a custom test for your own uses and depending on which range of test you are creating so the test classes are available train test base check or even the model related so as you so we have completed the two different test scenarios uh, train and test validation and data validation now we are going to perform the test related with model analysis and validation in this next step we are going to perform the model analysis and validation test so let's create this new jupyter notebook and use this same packages import and we need the same data set so in this scenario let's use this harder data set so we have df equals 
So because we are performing the test related with models, so we need to perform the training here. So I will be using this Jupyter Notebook where I already have the Keras based machine learning experiment. As you could see here that I am using the Keras and here is our network which we have created and then we are compiling our model and here we are training. So if you are interested more about this experiment, please look into this Jupyter Notebook and that will explain you. For us, we are trying to expedite our learning here. So what we are going to do is that we are taking the DF input. So the input because we are splitting between the data frame uh, and the target column here. So DF input data frame create a new data frame taking the data frame and and so these are the if we look into the total number of columns. So we have the 14 columns so DF dot columns here. So we are extracting this column. It means from 0 to 13 will be the input and the 14th will be the target. So here we are taking the df and i log. then we are saying for the here we need from 0 to 13. So df i log. So now if we look into the df input as you could see here is a 13 column but it's the same number of rows. Same thing if you would want to do this for the df target we just need the 14th column so this will be df target and if you would want to name the so columns df target we can look into the df target and 303 rows and one column so we got our target here now we need to split our data into the test and train so i, I will expedite this whole thing and here we are splitting it so let's i think we could do this transformation so let's take this transformation here we are taking the df input and scaled input and finally there you go so now we have df input train df input test df input target df target train and df target test and here is our data set let's build the model now so using the keras define the network That's our network. I already have the Keras and TensorFlow installed in my machine. That's why there is no problem. And I will be just bypassing this whole thing and I will be running this test here. So this is our model. We are not using any callback here. So I will use this and our boss is going to okay. So just for quick test, we could use only 10 epochs and that is our model and let's run this test. So 10 epochs, everything is done very quickly. Let's look into the model summary and accuracy. So here is our result. And that's our accuracy for the 10 epochs. Now we have this model. So this model can be used with our deep checks. So now we will use from full suite so we have full suite now and remember what we have done here we have to create this data set based on training and test so same exercise we have to do here now from deep checks data set and we need to so ds train will be data set and it will use the df so in our scenario so there is one caveat when we are using with this deep checks data set because this data set is going to build the training data set for the deep checks and depending on this definition which we have created earlier it actually uses the label column too and in this training data set we do not have the input because we have already removed the target so we need to take the df and we need to actually split a new df chain. So we can say df train and the df test equals and use the test size 0 
So we have built this new DF train and now we could use DF train here. Let's define the label column just to make sure that is target in the DF. So that's the target. So label will be column. And in this, the category features, we can say there are no categories. So if you do not pass uh, label column, it automatically took these three columns as the categorical. But if you do not want to pass, you can say category features null and it will not going to create any categorical feature. The same thing we could do for DS test test we are taking this df test label column and features now that way we could force that the categorical features will be not used now we could do sweet result equals to sweet dot run and the training data set will be the ds train and the test data set will be the ds test and we need to pass the model now so model is this is our model so we will pass the model here previously when we ran this test we haven't passed the model whenever we are performing the test it means it only does the training and test validation but now we are performing the model including test we ran the test as you see here the validation with the model is going on through the deep checks library sweet result is completed here is our sweet result and we could export this save as html and i will call it Here we can take a look. So the performance report, simple model comparison, and we can look into here. As you could see, there is still lots of tests which are not showing any result here. And it knows that we are building the Keraj sequential model. So sequential model does not have the attribute get param. So there is model info related. If you would want to do the boosting overfit check, then we need to use one of these given type of boosting model. Rest again several tests are not showing any result these are common information we have seen earlier and here we could look into each parameter so performance report train and test scores relative degradation is not greater than 0 0.1 so it means the the score for the training and test there is not big changes here go top simple model comparison here is the negative rmse values and model performance gain over simple model is not less than 10%. Unused features, here is the feature importance percent and feature variance percent. So this is the feature importance values for these given columns. So there is some caution we need to look into. Data duplication, some of the results records are duplicated here model inference time training data set which is average model inference time for one sample is not greater than 0 0.001 so it i am not sure how it really does oh it actually did it it took that much time so some inference was done to get this value so that is also test data set model inference for the train and test okay drift train and test drift so that is also between accepted value for the training and test data sets. We have already looked into that earlier. So these are the drifts for given values. Feature whole data, data set drift, not so much recorded. Main features contributing to drift. That is also size comparison is also everything. So predictive power score. So these are the results we have seen for our given test suite. However, some of the tests we could not see because of our model is TensorFlow Keras sequential model. And if you would want to look into this boosting overfit, 
we have to use a different model. Let's come back here. One thing we could do is that when we are running this test, we build a new model. Let's make it epoch 100. Let's run 100 time. Model accuracy is 89. I was expecting that this output also has the model accuracy, some of the model error analysis. Data must be one dimensional model error analysis. Model info, okay, get parameters. So because of this sequential model, the parameters cannot be extracted. So okay, that may not be supported for now. So now we have the new test with, so previously the result we have ran, the epochs were actually 10. So next will be box 100. So we can do the another test with deep checks. So sweet result. Yes, see this result. This is the 100 performance report. So our train 0 0.43, 0 0.59 within the range. Model comparison, this is a sequential model. model. Rest is all same. Next, we are going to add random forest classifier. So I have a code related with random forest classifier. So here is the random forest classifier. So let me say, and it's taking the estimator is 100, maximum depth is five, random state is one, and it's taking the input training and target train. And that will be model random forest, model random forest. So now let's check the performance. That's our performance. If we want to test training score and test score. So model RF. So that's the random forest model test. Now, if we would want to run this test here, sweet result, we could do another test. And now we are using the random forest model. And let's run the test. Let's look into the sweet results. Simple model comparison, performance report. And here is F1 because system already knows we can save this to sweet result dot HTML random forest model performance. So we have F1 precision recall model, simple model comparison, not less than 10%. Here is 1.2. F1, class zero, class one, ROC. So more taking the get parameter. So looks like the error related with error analysis. So the, the error which was related with sequential that get parameters because the random forest looks like the parameters are red still the boosting was not done with boosting overfit because we didn't use any of these boosting models roc report test data set that is added here so we could take a look so we have built the model now using the random forest classifier now Now we can actually take the example of gradient boosting classifier and hopefully that is part of gradient boosting classifier. So let's use the gradient boosting classifier, a scalar, I have code and it's taking the same input and it's called the gradient boosting training score. So we have gradient boot boosting. Now we could run the test suite with different model gradient boost suite result as you could see here uh, it should not have the gradient boosting related record here because now we could see those results are available here so it will say 
uh, it's also a simple model comparison uh, boosting overfit so that's something available so we can say sweet result dot save part gb so boosting overfit training and test more than five percent so it's negative minus five dot eight percent so that's roc roc again features here importance and feature variance okay so you have seen that uh, we were able to run three different tests for the models by using Karaz and random forest and the uh, gradient boost classifier and we have seen the different results all together in this tutorial for you guys it's a Karaz we also had the random forest we also has the gradient boosting so i have added that and all these jupyter notebooks will be available for anyone to take a look these tests and perform their own test deep checks so these are the reports we have so let me push this code so rm html So only the I Python notebooks are here. So for anyone who is interested with these Jupyter notebooks, the notebooks will be available in this deep checks location so please clone this public code repo and work on these jupyter notebooks as your need so our hands-on lab is concluded now in this lab you have created the tests using the deep check library and we have performed test at the data validation point then we have also performed another set of tests by using the training and the test data set we have used two different data sets to perform our test just to get better understanding of the test suite and the particulars are available within the test suites in different categories finally we have performed the test with model integration and model analysis and, and for the final model analysis testing we have used Keras, Random Forest, and the Gradient Boosting Classifiers to learn more about the different tests and their applicability towards the machine learning pipeline. The objective of this tutorial was to get you started, and I hope that we have achieved our objective. So that's all I have for you in this hands-on lab, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my another tutorial. Until then, thank you. That's all, my friends. If you have enjoyed our content, please like it, share it, subscribe it. And finally, please remember, be good and do good. Thank you.